I am Bo Walker, uh, and I'm a data scientist. I have, you know, a unique background. I'm a data scientist. I uh, have, a, you know, biology degree and evolution and ecology, and also a JD or Juris Doctor degree. Um, and so I kind of have a long and winding path to data science, but I absolutely love data science, and I love helping others, um, especially those with unique background, to get into data science. Yes, I, I did definitely notice that, and I think you're doing a lot to help the data science community on LinkedIn, and then more so with this new initiative, Method Data Science, that I'm sure thousands of people are eagerly waiting to have this launch. Could you tell us more about this initiative and kind of why you're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm I'm super busy right now with, I, I'm, you know, I'm teaching at university, a data science boot camp, um, and, and my job. And so that's kind of why I've pushed out the launch of method, um, a little bit because I have to finish some other things, but this is an idea that's been, um, eating at me for months. Um, I, I get asked, you know, as I'm sure you do multiple times a day on how do you break into the industry? You know, what, you know, what, what tips, um, should I, you know, should I do what, what blog should I follow? What skills do I need to develop? And part of that is why we started data science office hours to, to answer some of those questions. But the other question I, and thing that I, that I run into is people who have these skills, um, you know, maybe they've just completed a boot camp or they, they've done a whole bunch of online courses and then they go to find a job. And despite everyone saying that there's a ton of jobs in data science, um, they're told that, they don't have enough experience to, to get an entry level job. And it's immensely frustrating. I'm not the only one that's identified this problem. Multiple people have, have written about it, talked about it. Um, but I've started to realize that maybe there's something I can, I, I can do to help. Um, and, and that's where method comes in. Uh, the idea behind method is to be, you know, part freelance consulting data science um, agency and, and then part kind of hands on mentoring. So I love mentoring people and, and helping people. Um, and I think what many new data scientists need and, and what, what they're lacking coming out of boot camps forever is, is the experience of working on a real data science team um, on, on real projects. Uh, you know, data science in the class, classroom is drastically different than it is on the ground. Um, and, and even data science in, in different types of companies is, is, is drastically different. Um, so that's, you know, a little bit about uh, a why, why I came up with method. So, uh. Yeah, and I, I think it's great. I mean, I do want to hear more about, so how would people get kind of the team environment experience with method of data science, if you can share it at this point? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> part of this is... Um, you know, I'm still working out the details of exactly how it would work. Um, and just as, a, as an aside, I'm a person who always has a bunch of ideas. And in the past, I've gone out and built something completely and then went and tested to see if people liked it. <laughs> you know, with method, I'm doing, I've, I've done the opposite. I had an idea, I threw it out there before I kind of created it, and, and the response has been incredible. Um, so I think, you know, that's a lesson for startups too, is yeah. I've seen so many failed startups where they go and build this really cool tool, but it turns out the market doesn't want it. Um, so um, anyway, the way, the way that it would work is, um, you know, method is really supposed to help three different types, types of people. One is aspiring data scientists. One is um, startups and small, medium sized businesses. And then the third is, is recruiters. And I'll talk about kind of how it works for each of those. So for aspiring data scientists, you, you would apply to be, um, to work as a freelancer with method. Um, and, and you would be assigned to a team of probably three or four people um, managed by a senior data scientist. Okay? And you would work on, on three types of projects. Um, you would work on uh, you know, paid projects that, that we get um, and you would get paid as a portion of those and your freelance rate um, on paid projects. We would have unpaid projects that, that could be um, kind of pro bono or um, you know, public interest or something like that kind of projects. Um, and then there could be projects of like, you know, Kaggle competitions, other things like that, that are just for helping you develop your portfolio. Um, it may be 
you know, one project maybe help write a blog article that that's a new tutorial on this new package or library that came out. Um, you wouldn't get paid for that, but it would be something that would absolutely benefit your portfolio. Um, and so that's what an aspiring data science scientist would get. Um, you'd have um, mentorship from the senior data scientists in the team, you know, weekly meetings, remote, of course, um, learning how to work on, on these real projects and, and all the while getting training and feedback on your work style and helping you build things to help build your resume while you're searching for, for a full-time job. So question there, where, where are you getting the senior data scientists and kind of what is their incentive? Are these just mentors that want to give back to the community? So um, initially, you know, I, I, there's a couple, um, a couple ways that senior data scientists could help. One is just as a, as to pick up freelance work. So okay. the senior data scientists would, would be paid at their freelance rate. Um, you know, initially it's going to start really small. Um, it'll because I, I want to make sure method only does high quality work, <laughs> and so the senior data scientist would be paid uh, as part of the consulting work. Um, and then there might be some other incentives as well. So, okay. so yeah. But but then also, I mean, the opportunity of, of managing a team, and you know, in a lot of companies, you may have a desire to be involved in mentoring and management but there's not not necessarily a lot of opportunity and so for senior data scientists something like meth would be great to kind of let them freelance on the side and be part of the team and get mm -hmm. that experience of, of helping and giving back to the community but also you know getting something out of it okay cool so you mentioned that helps aspiring data scientists i think you mentioned hiring managers and recruiters right and then i interrupted you after aspiring yeah. Yeah, so um, well, the next so the next biggest problem. So aspiring data scientists, current data scientists, um, small and medium sized businesses. So I've spent most or all of my career in startups, small businesses and medium sized businesses. I, I haven't ever worked for an incredibly large company, unless you count a university, which I don't think that really counts. Um, so uh, and you know, I've, I've been freelancing in some form or another, either in marketing or data science for the past 10 or more years. Um, so I have a lot of experience kind of with that. And there's a real need for the, the power and the tools that, that data science has in these small businesses. And the vast majority of them are way behind in adopting them. You know, um, the, the huge companies are you know they have to be up on on the latest trends and adopting the latest technologies. But a lot of these small businesses either don't know that these new tools are available or they can't afford a full-time data scientist. Um, and so that's where method would come in is that we can offer um, re reduced rates, kind of a bolt on uh, data science department or, you know, chief technology officer or chief um, data scientist, you know, for, for hire and, and work with startups and help do really high quality work, um, but at a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that, that's kind of how, you know our, what our sell would be to our clients um, and then the way that it helps uh, you know recruiters and hiring managers is um, you know these any of the the science, data scientists that come through our program have, have been vetted with real um, you know real projects um, you know they have a work portfolio that they can show that there's feedback that you know they can they can talk to their their managers <laughs> very openly and candidly about um, because it, it, method's not meant to be a full-time, um, long-term employment okay. thing. It's supposed to help be a step, you know, to help you get the job that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and so hiring managers can ask, you know, the senior manager, hey, how is this person, you know, um, so it will result in a lot, a lot higher quality candidates. Got it. But my goal. You know, my goal is not to be become a recruiter. <laughs> that's not that's not my interest, and that's not uh, my skill set. Um, but I am very interested in mentoring and helping data scientists, and then and helping small and medium sized businesses and startups um, really have have the power of data science in, in their organization. I think I think this whole thing is awesome. It seems like it's going to help everyone. Last question on this before I move on. Do you have a process that you're kind of qualifying the incoming aspiring data scientists that, you know, just have, let's say, a certificate or they have some experience in Kaggle but don't have real work experience? Is there like a test or are you accepting everyone? So, um, 
I, I'm still building that process out and I've had I've been overwhelmed with the response that I have obviously I starting out I can't I can't accept everyone I just simply don't have the capacity or the work for everyone initially I'm hoping that we'll get to that point and there's some really positive signs um, so I, I don't have those criteria yet in place I, I know from the past um, when I've hired people you know the things that I look for and um, because this is a will be remote teams, you know, you absolutely need to, to show that you're passionate and that you're a self-starter. I mean, you're not going to, we're not going to physically be able to look over your shoulder yeah. um, and make sure that, that you're doing the work, um, you know, but, but my hope is that, you know, that anyone who wants to work with method will see this as, as an opportunity to, um, to not just have, you know, pet projects from from a class or something, but to to build some some really mean, meaningful things for their their um, resume or their portfolio, um, okay. and to help help make a difference um, with, with with small companies. And okay, great, thank you. So the next yeah. question I have for you is: I know you have an interesting background and kind of a unique journey to data scientists, and you have a background in law. Did that help you in, in any way to get to your role in data sciences? Um, it absolutely did because before I went to law school, I was a data scientist. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got into law school, I realized how much I missed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so um, it helped push me back. Um, I was, so I went to law school particularly to be a patent attorney. Um, and that's because I love inventions. I love working with, with businesses and helping creating new things. Um, and, and data science was still kind of new as a profession then. And um, my dad has a number of inventions and I've worked with patent attorneys. So it just seemed like something that was really exciting. Um, and I just do still really enjoy that. Um, but as I you know, worked at a lot, I worked for a law firm for, for three years, drafting patent applications and, and doing kind of all elements of intellectual property law. Um, and I, continuously found myself jealous of our clients that come in with this cool invention and I was stuck just writing about it mm. not actually helping them build it or come up with it so right. so um, I'm really glad for my legal training it gives me a really unique background and, and look on things um, I've, I've you know managed IP uh, I've been the IP manager and in, in companies since I left the profession you know, kind of manage our patent portfolio trademark strategy and stuff like that um, but you know the biggest role that that it played was helping me realize just how much I love data science um, and how much I missed it okay very cool <laughs> um, <laughs> the last question I have for you it's more about you and just kind of what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not focused on data if you have any spare time that is. <laughs> I, I don't have very much spare time right now unfortunately um, but what I love to do most is to spend time with my family. Um, I'm married. I have two little boys. And any spare time that I have, I love to spend with them. You know, this last weekend, we went to San Francisco on a vacation. And it was just awesome. Um, so that, that's, you know, that's what I do in my, my spare time. Is Very my cool. <laughs> How old are they? Um, I have a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. Okay. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for being on Humans of Data Science, Bo. It's been You're very welcome. nice getting to know you better. Thank you for having me. I